So, dear brothers uh, in Christ, uh, uh, today uh, we are going to see a very, very important uh, topic. So, uh, the thing that is followed by every Christian in this world, and uh, the Christians don't usually uh, miss uh, this one at all. Because there are two things uh, that our Lord gave as a symbol for a Christian. The one and the important thing is baptism. And the other important thing is the Lord's Memorial Supper. So, the Lord's Memorial Supper, uh, when should we actually take it? Should we take it uh, monthly ones? Should we take it uh, weekly ones? Or should we take it daily? So, this is the question. Because in various places, uh, they do it in various types. Uh, in your Nepal, uh, when do you take it? You have in the churches... When they used to give it to you, but, uh, would they give it to you monthly or weekly or daily? How is it? Monthly. Monthly, brother. Okay, monthly. Good. So let us read today uh, from the scriptures. Uh, when should we take it? Because some people do it monthly and in some places they do it weekly. Every week, uh, whenever they gather. And in some, especially in the Roman Catholic churches, they do it daily, morning, evening, you see, they do it, which is correct. So we should be following the Bible. So, of course, uh, all these things can't be correct. Either one of the things should be correct. So, which is the correct one? So about this one, Apostle Paul clearly tells to us in full detail in First uh, Corinthians 11 chapter, verses 20 to verse 30. So let us uh, read those verses. Uh, I request uh, uh, Joel brother to read First Corinthians eleven chapter verses twenty to thirty brother. Okay. Hmm. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat Lord supper. Hmm. For in eating, everyone take it before or his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What have we ate? Houses eat and to drink in, or dis despise ye the church of God, and same th them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Ah, see, here Apostle Paul clearly tells that when you come together in one place, this is not the purpose for eating the Lord's Supper. Because in the church at uh, Corinthian, whenever they used to gather for this uh, Lord's uh, Memorial Supper, they used to eat like eating a meal. Therefore, in verse 21 it says, for in eating... Everyone taketh before other his own supper and is hungry and is drunken. So, there is a discipline that has to be followed when we take this memorial supper. We can't just, uh, uh, you see, gather together and eat it as an ordinary meal. Apostle Paul clearly, you see, warns them and clearly corrects them saying, this is not the way you should be doing uh, because this is not the purpose of your gathering to eat and drink. If you have, if you're really hungry, and if you want to take whenever you want, huh? you see, Apostle Paul tells what in verse twenty-two: What have you not houses to eat, to drink in, or despise you the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. You don't have as houses if you want to really just come for a casual drink or a, just for a meal, just to satisfy your hunger. Whenever you want, you, you are taking it. You see, whenever you desire you are taking it, you are taking it weekly, monthly, daily. Is it just a meal that you are taking? You don't have houses. If you are so hungry, you just want to eat this one as a casual food without understanding its proper meaning then please you can have it in your house. That's what Apostle Paul says. Next. Next. What does it tell further? Uh, continue with the reading. Verse 23 to 26, brother. Uh. Okay. 
For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus same night in which he was betrayed took beard. Ah, see? Betrayed. Now Apostle Paul clearly gives uh, his uh, understanding and explanation about the Lord's uh, Supper, saying, what I am going to teach you now is not my own teaching, God. You see, but uh, it was uh, received by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, Lord Jesus Christ uh, taught, uh, you see, these things uh, clearly to Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That means Apostle Paul is directly taught by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and he says that uh, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. So when did the Lord take the bread? You see, the scriptures says, and Apostle Paul says that it was in the night that in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. Then continue with her. Uh, Joel, brother, continue a little bit louder. Your voice is very low. Okay, brother. And, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take. It, this is my body, which is broken broken for you. This do in remem remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sobbed, saying, This is this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as of as you as ye drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as a yet his bread and drink cup, drink this cup, ye do save the Lord dead till he come. Uh -huh. See, he says, uh, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same also he took the cup which he supped saying, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the last death till he come. So he says, whenever you're doing this one, please remember this is not for any meal or something gathering. It is remembering the Lord's death till he comes. You need to do it. So remembering the Lord's death is a very solemn situation. You see, a solemn uh, incident, uh, you can't just uh, do it uh, whichever way you want. Then which is correct? Uh, is monthly correct? Is weekly ones correct? Or is daily ones correct? Uh, you see, next verse 27 to 31, Buddha. Joel, brother, we can continue. Read a little bit louder. I can. I think you can increase the volume. Okay, brother. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink, drink of that cup, for he that eat it and drink it unworthily eat and drink uh, damnation to himself, not dis discerning the Lord Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. See? Verse 27, he says, Wherefore, this is uh, as often as you are doing, you are showing the Lord's death. So, therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So, there is a proper manner that we need to take. So, as per the scriptures, we need to take. Or else, it is a taking it in an unworthy manner. Then we will be, you see, guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that is what this uh, signifies. Uh, so you can't take it in whichever way you want. Uh. So we need to take it 
in a correct way. Now, which is correct? Huh? Monthly, weekly, daily? Oh, no, not everything can be correct. Huh? Which is the correct method? Huh? That's what Apostle Paul says. You're taking it unearthy. Manner means you will be guilty of it. Therefore, in verse 28 it says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let each and every person examine for himself whether he's doing it properly, scripturally or not. If you're not doing it, what does it say? Huh? For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning that it is the Lord's body. You see, and for this cause, what is there, Simsa? Many are weak, sickly among you, you see, and many are slept through. Therefore, it is necessary that we understand it and uh, conduct it in a proper way. Therefore, verse 32, it says, when we are just of the Lord and chastened, uh, you see, uh, of the Lord, we should not be condemned with the world. So it's better that we examine ourselves and uh, study about this one thoroughly. Therefore, dear brethren, so we'll take a little bit of time to understand this one properly. Now, there were two things that were uh, given, you see, by our Lord. Apostle Paul says, in the day, in the night, uh, when our Lord was, uh, you see, betrayed, he took these two things uh, and, uh, you see, and celebrated this uh, supper. So, what are the two things that our Jesus took? Let us read in Luke 22nd chapter 19 to 20. Uh, Muna sister, can you read Luke 22nd chapter 19 to 20? And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup of after supper, supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is set for you. Very good, sir. So here, two things are mentioned. You see, it says, uh, you see, uh, Jesus took bread. The first thing Jesus gave was the bread, saying that this is my body. And after this one, you see, he took the, you see, wine huh, and said, uh, this is uh, the blood of the New Testament which is shed for many. Now why these two symbols are given? What is the meaning of these two symbols? Uh, first, uh, let us read the bread. What does bread signify in the Bible? You see, Jesus said uh, in John 6.51, I am the living bread. Uh, you see, which came down from heaven. If any man eat of the bread, uh, he shall live forever. And the bread uh, which I give for this uh, world is my life. So Jesus clearly gave the definition that the bread means is life. Uh, therefore, dear brethren, we have studied in the first class, uh, you see, uh, the class of the ransom, you see, the whole world were condemned to death uh, in Adam. Uh, isn't it? So, through Adam, death came to everybody and to save the entire uh, uh, Adamic uh, generation, the mankind of Adam, Jesus gave a ransom. He came to this earth as a second Adam and gave the ransom equal corresponding price. You see, the bread which I give is my life. So through Jesus' life, the entire mankind is having forgiveness of sins and they have standing with God. So through Jesus' life, what did we get? You see, we got forgiveness of sins because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. You see, but there was no rule that God should save us. But he went beyond that one and gave his only begotten son for our sins. You see, and by believing in his blood, we have, you see, forgiveness of sins. Therefore, dear brethren, we have studied in this divine plan chart. You see, N, N is a plane of perfection. Adam was created here. But when Adam sinned, through him, the entire generation fell on plain R. Now, how can we be restored to the grace of God? It is only by believing in the blood of Jesus. Therefore, we read in the Bible that whosoever believes in Jesus, their sins are forgiven. If their sins are forgiven, it means that they were no more condemned. They are treated on plain N. You see? How they are brought on plain and in God's sight, 
they are treated as perfect they are considered as perfect therefore this is justification you see justification means what something which has gone you see uh, imbalanced you are you adding something to make it perfect that is called a justification you see when uh, two people are fighting you see and imagine somebody goes and interferes in between what do the people say hey, why are you justifying him he is the culprit so justifying means what adding something to make something perfect so jesus added his sacrifice but we can be perfect in god's sight therefore you see once we believe in jesus what happens we come to the uh, that uh, higher plane of justification we have studied this one in detail in the class of the church let us read romans 51 romans 51 uh, roshni sister can you read Yes, brother. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, therefore, being justified by faith, not actual justification. We not really become perfect before God. It is only by faith. God considers us that we are perfect, that we are sinless. Hence, we have peace with God. Or else, we would have cast out. We are all cast out. I mean, Adam said, "What happened? He was cast out of Garden of Eden. We are all cast out similarly as Adam was out of Garden of Eden. We did not have peace with God, but through Christ we have peace. This is by faith." Read Romans eight one also. Eight Romans eight one. Ah, uh, Romans sister, can you read? Romans sister. Romans eight one. Just a second, brother. Okay. There is therefore now no condemn condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. but after the spirit very good sir. so there is no condemnation the sins are forgiven for who those who are in jesus by faith so this is the meaning of the bread by the bread of jesus we have got justification of sins are forgiven so bread means the forgiveness of sins that represents our justification okay now second what did the jesus give he gave the cup the cup was filled with wine you see ha huh? so what does uh, the cup uh, say what did jesus say luke 2220 luke 2220 uh who can read uh anil brother anil brother can you read luke 2220 Uh, Anil Badar, you there? Okay. Uh, Ashish Badar, can you read? Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, "This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you." See, the cup is a new testament in my blood. You see, so the wine represents his blood. Now, what is the meaning of blood? you can we drink blood ha huh? in the law we see god had forbidden to drink blood you see even when uh, the first world was destroyed by the flood there also god had clearly commanded that you should not eat any flesh with blood because in blood there is life let us read genesis 94 genesis 94 uh, kamal badar you there Kamal brother is there, sir? No, brother, he is not here. Okay, can you read uh, Genesis nine four, sir? Okay, brother, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat? Shall you not eat? No, when Jesus mentioned about the bread in John six chapter, he also mentioned about his blood also. You see. 
John 6 chapter 53 to 56 I read for you and Jesus said unto them verily verily I sent you except you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you this is the terms and conditions of the gospel age except you eat the bread and drink of the wine you have no life so whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood at eternal life I will raise him up the last day for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. You see, dear brethren, as soon as Jesus mentioned about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, everybody misunderstood that Jesus was speaking literally that they should eat his uh, flesh, drink his blood. And since then, many of the disciples went away from him. See, John 6, uh, 66. John 6, chapter 66. Uh, Gopal Badar, can you read John 6, 66? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. But then walked no more with him because this was cannibalism against the law. So everybody thought that Jesus was speaking literally. No. Now what is the meaning of... Uh, Eating his bread and drinking his blood. You see, imagine if there is a professor huh, who is a very intelligent botany professor. You understood everything huh, from each and every nook and corner of uh, botany. He knows everything. You see, what would uh, we tell him? We would tell him that he has uh, huh, completely drunk botany. What does it mean that he has literally drunk botany? Eh? Has he literally drunk uh, science completely? No, that means he has understood it. Uh, he knows everything in detail. Uh, it is there in his blood. Uh, that means, you see, botany is his life. Uh, that is the way, actually, Jesus said, you have to heat my body means you have to assimilate me. You have to accept me. And eat my blood means what? My life. You see, as my life is there, similarly, your life also should be in the same way. This is what actually Jesus meant. Bread, we saw the meaning. So, blood means what? Blood means the life of Jesus. How was the life of Jesus? How did he walk in this, in this world? He was holy, harmless. You see, separate from sinners. He led a life which is pleasing in God's sight. See, how was Jesus' life? Ephesians 5.2 Ephesians 5.2 uh, Amar brother. Amar brother, you are there? Ephesians 5.2 Can you read brother? I'll read brother. Okay, please. Brother, okay? Please, 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 please. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet sweet smelling savour. See, walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself as a sweet smelling sacrifice to God. His life was a beautiful incense to God. So that is the way we should walk. Like Christ. Like Christ means what? Offering ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. Romans 12.1. Muna sister, can you read Romans 12.1? I beseech you, dear for brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, reasonable service. See? Offering our bodies to God. Sacrifice. Live a sacrificial life. This is just a small service you are doing. It is not any great thing that you are doing to God. A reasonable service. This is the life of Christ. Live like Christ. That is the meaning of having his blood in us. You see, dear brethren, huh? this is what uh, Jesus said to the disciples. You remember, you see, huh? uh, James and John, had sent their mother because they were uh, Jesus' cousin. You see? And she went and requested uh, Jesus saying, oh Lord, 
please grant my two sons, one to sit on the left hand, on the right hand, in your kingdom. What did Jesus say to them? You see, Jesus said, Oh woman, you don't know what you're asking because that right I don't have. But there's a condition for the brother. If your sons fulfill that condition, it will be given only to them. Read Matthew chapter 20, 21 and 22. Matthew chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Anil Badar, Sarita Ashtar, you're there? Anil Badar. Okay, brother. Uh, Matthew chapter 20, mm -hmm. verse 21 and 22. Oh, wait, wait, little bit. Matthew. Matthew. 20. Matthew 20, 21. What is it you want? He asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking. Jesus said to them, Can you drink the cup of cup I am going to drink? We we can, they answered. Hmm? Finished? Yes, 22. Uh, see, what did Jesus say? Huh? Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? And uh, to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Uh, you see, so that was the condition. Jesus was not uh, literally speaking about the cup because on the day of the Passover, you see on the memorial, everybody had the, the same cup. Jesus was not speaking about the literal cup, dear brethren, because they all drank in the same cup. No, This is not so difficult. Uh, the same cup what you are drinking. I can also drink it. But what is this cup Jesus is saying? Uh, Jesus was saying the cup of bitter experiences. The cup of sufferings. You see, are you able to drink of that cup of sufferings? My life is full of suffering, sorrow, pain. You see, I'm doing in the will of God, I'm sacrificing myself totally. And uh, my life is a sweet smelling savor to God. Can you drink of this cup? Like me, that was the question of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, remember, when uh, Jesus was... Uh, you see, supposed to be arrested. Malchus came and uh, took hold of Jesus. Immediately, Peter took a sword and smote his ears. You see, actually he had aimed to his uh, head. But just missed what happened. The sword just uh, chopped off his ears. Now, what did Jesus say to Peter at that time? Read John 18.11. John 18.11. Joel, brother, can you read John 18.11? Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the set, the cup of the cup which my father had given me, shall I not drink it? See, the cup which my father has given me, shall I not drink it? Is he speaking about the literal cup? No, the cup of experience, the sufferings. You see, the God has given me that the trial. You see, all these things are permitted of my Lord. Shall I not drink it? Jesus here was speaking about his sufferings, dear brethren. Remember well, Jesus, what did he pray in Garden of Gethsemane? Father, oh Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass away from me. Let not my will, but let thy will be done. Isn't it? Read Matthew 26, 39. Matthew 26, 39. Roshan can you read? And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let him cup pass from me. Ne uh, nevertheless, not as I will, but as though with. See? Let this cup pass from me. Pass means what? This cup means what? Which cup did Jesus have in his hand? No, there was no cup. But that experience. He requests to the Father, let this pass away from me, but not my will. Let your will be done. You see, it was Father's will that Jesus should experience it. That sufferings, dear brethren. You see, this is the meaning of the bread and the wine. Therefore, first Jesus gave the bread. Next, he gave the wine. That means first we need to get justification for our sins. All our sins should be forgiven. 
Next thing, as soon as uh, immediately our sins are forgiven, immediately what we should do? We should drink of the cup uh, and share and partake in Jesus' suffering, said your brother. And this is the condition of the gospel age. If anybody has to be a Christian, if anybody wants to be a Christian in this gospel age, this has to be fulfilled. They have to follow this one. Philippians 1.29. Philippians 1.29. Uh, Munar sister, can you read Philippians 1.29? For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on me but also to suffer for his sake. See, not only to believe on him. It is given for you not only to believe. Don't, no, no. Only believing is not sufficient. But also to suffer for his sake. You just take the bread. No, it's not sufficient. Along with the bread you need to take the wine also. You need to suffer with Christ also. No, I'll just leave the comfortably, just by believing Jesus, I don't want his sufferings. No, that is not this age. That you can come in a millennial age. You can come in a thousand years, but now gospel age, this terms and conditions has to be fulfilled. Therefore, you know, Apostle Paul, he rejoiced, he rejoiced very gladly to partake in Christ's sufferings. Colossians 1.24 Colossians 1.24 Gopal brother, can you read Colossians 1.24 Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. See, who now rejoice in my sufferings? I rejoice in sufferings. Can anybody tell that I rejoice in sufferings? Everybody will be so discouraged, depressed when they suffering. But Apostle Paul says, I rejoice in sufferings. Why? And thus I fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh. So Jesus' sufferings was there. That was the cup which Jesus gave to disciples. You drink. All of you, all of you drink it. That portion, Apostle Paul also got little bit. He said, whatever is left over, you see, in that cup, I'm glad to drink it at your friend. You see, why? For Christ's sake, this is the meaning of the Lord's Supper. But today, you see, they take it without even understanding the proper meaning of it. They think, oh, if you take, what will happen? You see, huh? all our sins will be forgiven. You see, or else if we don't take it, what will happen? We will fall sick. You see, and we won't be blessed. Some other tragedy will happen in our life. God will punish us. You see, all these weird thoughts you see? Huh? Huh? What do they say? Huh? We will become weak. We will become sick. Uh, somebody will sleep. Huh? They take that verse literally. As mentioned in Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. Dear brethren, uh, it is not for the forgiveness of sins. Uh, the Lord's memory is not for the forgiveness of sins, uh, dear brethren. The death of Jesus on the cross, that is for our forgiveness. Not the Lord's Supper. You see? Therefore, because of this understanding only, you know what they do? They take it whenever they want. Some people take it monthly, some people take it weekly, some people take it daily because they say, oh, you, Jesus uh, has to cleanse us of our sins daily. Now, huh? oh, daily is it necessary that, uh, uh, you see, uh, Christ should die for us? How is Christ sacrifice? In the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, the people of Israel had to sacrifice daily. Morning, evening, they had to give the sacrifices. But uh, Jesus was not like that. One sacrifice, one time, finished, gone forever. Read Hebrews 7.27. Romy Easter, can you read Hebrews 7.27? Hebrews 7.27, Easter. Yes. Um, who need it not daily as those high priest to offer up sacrifice first for okay Sorry. I will read it uh, who need it not daily as those high priest 
to offer up sacrifice first uh, for his own sins and then for the peoples for this he did once once when he offered up himself once for all he finished it dear brethren there is no need to repeat it monthly daily weekly thinking that this is for a forgiveness of sins sir what is necessary for forgiveness of sins first john 17 it says but if we walk in light as he is in light we are fellowship one with another the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us from all sins the blood of jesus cleanses us from all sins sir not this memorial supper not the lord supper so some people claim no brother hmm, you see huh? before uh, huh, we accepted christ we had done so many sins no for that one jesus died on the cross okay but for future after uh, believing in jesus we sin no you know, for that one what to do for that one only we take communion they will tell eh huh? correct ah huh? yeah everybody tells like this only why huh because huh what does the bible say first corinthians 1126 read first corinthians 1126 joel brother read brother what does it say <coughs> for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do so the lords that till he come so as often as you do he is showing the lost death. so do it whenever you want please do it monthly weekly daily and then they twist the scriptures like this one and tell you see therefore it is for forgiveness of sins we need to take it every now and then you see but what is the hebrew say hebrew says that jesus offered a is sacrifice once so once is sufficient so when do we take it actually monthly weekly ones monthly ones daily ones so which ones we need to take you see dear brethren you see it is none of this then which is correct brother you see the name itself has got a complete understanding so it is called as lord's memorial supper correct no see okay now lord means what our lord uh, jesus christ you see supper means what supper means what what is the time that we have supper ha huh? supper means what okay i'll tell you see early in the morning we have what do we have what you your early in the morning we have nothing for your food for your stomach ka breakfast very good breakfast why it is called as breakfast because night you would have eight and again you going to eat only 12 hours after almost 12 hours gap is there so it's like a fasting breaking the fast that is called as breakfast okay okay good then afternoon you have for your stomach what is that called as afternoon you don't have anything for afternoon are lunch huh what's the lunch very good stuff correct lunch good okay then night uh, what you having for uh, your stomach what is that called as dinner dinner very good stuff dinner oh good up you are intelligent so what is supper then now where do we fit this supper you know what is supper actually something you take in between the lunch and the dinner is called as a supper that means something you take around the sunset that is called as the supper see between 6 pm and 8 pm that is called the supper correct or not ha huh? correct or not if you are not sure sure please go and search it the supper means it is after sunset you see when did jesus uh, take it when did jesus take it read first corinthians 11 23 first corinthians 11 23 joel brother read brother first corinthians 11 23 scorinthi First Corinthians eleven twenty three. 
for I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, Jesus the same night in which he when was. Jesus, Jesus the same? Night. Night. Is it the day or night? Is it given day or night? Night. Night. So when did Jesus celebrate this supper? He celebrated in the night. After sunset. Hence it is called a supper. But today, eh, how many churches do it in the evening after sunset? Do they do it? They do it morning or evening? Morning. Morning. Now is it correct? That will become the Lord's memorial morning breakfast. <laughs> you see? But what did Jesus take it as? He took it as a supper day of the ram. Therefore, this has to be taken in a proper way. Why? I'll tell you in within a few minutes. I'll prove it from the scriptures why it has to be taken only in the evening. Okay? Now, uh, so, so many people tell, brother, uh, there are a lot of scriptures which says that you should take daily, you should take weekly, monthly. So let us read those ones. Acts 2.42. Please, somebody read Acts 2.42. Romeo, can you read Acts 2.42? And they continued just to steady steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread in their in prayers. Ah, see this. Huh? You see, breaking of the bread. Breaking of the bread. When when did they do it? Verse 46, sister. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house uh -huh. did See, They're... continuing daily, breaking bread from house to house. Brother, clearly is given a brother. They all celebrated. They all did it daily. Aha. Uh -huh. So we should do it daily. Okay. Read Acts 20, verse 7. Anil, brother, can you read Acts 20, verse 7? And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to together to break bread, Paul preached on to them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Ah, see, upon the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break the bread. So every first day of the week, every week, they used to gather to break the bread. So brother, is clear. So this has to be taken monthly, weekly as well. Okay? But uh, did you observe one difference in this verse? They have mentioned about bread, but have they mentioned about the wine? Jesus took not only the bread, he also took the wine. But here, there is no reference given about the wine at all. Why? Because this verse is not speaking about the Lord's memorial supper at all. This is speaking about the regular meal which the Jewish people used to have it. You see, we all know the customs of uh, the Jewish people, the Jewish people, they used to have food as a family. Everybody used to sit together. You see, we usually have now when we when we gather together, we have everybody sitting together, the brothers and sisters and all. That's the way the Jewish meal was there. And an elderly person used to pray for that food. And uh, you see, and uh, the common food that they used to have in, uh, you see, Israel, was bread. Hence we read uh, in the Bible that uh, Jesus uh, you see, broke the bread and fed how many people? 4,000, 5,000. Did he break rice and give? Huh? What did he break? He broke the bread. Uh. You see, when Satan tempted him, you see, he tempted him to make the stone as bread. Uh. He did not uh, tempt uh, Jesus to make this stone as meat uh, because bread was a very common meal, very poor man's meal. So bread was a very, very common thing and uh, and bread was like a meal to them. You see, they used to take the bread and pray it and break it. See, we got a lot of incidents and examples in the Bible. You remember uh, when Jesus was walking uh, along with the disciples to Emmaus? You see, what happened then? Uh, 
रीड लूक ट्वेंटी टू उधर रोशनी सिस्टर प्लीज रीड लूक ट्वेंटी टू लूक सॉरी लूक ट्वेंटी फोर चैप्टर सिस्टर प्लीज ओपन लूक ट्वेंटी फोर चैप्टर वर्स थर्टी एंड वर्स थर्टी वन रोशनी सिस्टर Luke twenty four chapter verse thirty and thirty one. Luke twenty four verse thirty and thirty one. Okay, brother. You got it, sir. Look, twenty-four chapter. Okay, Joel brother, can you read? Okay, Russian sir, you got it. Okay, okay, okay. Read, read, please, please read. Thirty-one. Thirty and thirty-first verse. Thirty and thirty-first. <clears throat> okay when he was at the table with them he took bread gave thanks broke it and began to give it to them then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and and he dis and this disappear from their sight mm. see what happened uh? see jesus went along with the disciples all this incident is the entire luke 24 chapter please read it in the house you see They were all sitting for the, you see, huh, for uh, dinner, and what happened? Ah, uh? Jesus was the one who prayed. Ah, uh, okay. So as soon as he prayed and break the bread, immediately what happened? Ah, uh? you see, the disciples recognized that this is our Lord, uh, and immediately Jesus disappeared. Ah, uh. so this way they identified that this is Jesus in the style he was breaking the bread. Uh, okay, now. that jesus resurrection was shown to the disciples in this way okay now when did this uh, incident happen read luke 24 one sister luke 24 one ha uh. hmm. on the first day of the week very early in the morning the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb ah so it was in the first day of the week this incident happened now what happened on that day read verse uh, 13 14 15 sister 13 14 15 16 same chapter chapter 13 verse 13 and 14 now that same day two of them were going to the uh, to a village called Emmaus about 7 uh, miles from Jerusalem underline it was the same day underline they were the same day they were traveling okay next verse 15 ha uh. as they talked and discussed this thing and these things with each other Jesus himself came up and walked along with them hmm continue but they were kept from recognizing him aha so jesus was with them but they could not recognize jesus now how did they recognize once he broke the bread he disappeared no he clearly understood that that is jesus so this was the way jesus resurrection was revealed to the disciples when was it it was the first day of the week now you tell me which is the first day of the week there are seven days in a week no Which is the first day of the week? Sunday. Hmm. Sunday. Sunday. First day of the week. Sunday. Yeah. First day of the week. Sunday. Wa. Okay. Which is the last day of the week? 
which is the last day nobody knows you don't have any weekend saturday saturday is the huh? because you have leave on saturday good see at least in your place is like that in our place no you ask this question everybody will tell that weekend means sunday sunday brother sunday is leave which is the first day of the week they will tell monday first day you need to go to school no actually first day of the week uh, is actually sunday only okay for israel custom the last day of the week was a sabbath day that is a saturday you see there was a rest in the entire israel but the first day of the week is a sunday this is the day that jesus was resurrected you see and how jesus was resurrected and how did he show to the disciples it was in the breaking of the bread read that verse again see luke 24 luke 24 30 and 31 luke 24 verse 30 and 31 anil brother can you read luke 24 30 and 31 Okay, brother. Look, twenty-four, thirty-one, thirty and thirty-one, both. Look, twenty-four. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave give thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. then their eyes were open and they recognized him hmm. and he disappeared from their sight ah so jesus was revealed in the way he broke the bread he could not be recognized because he did not come like jesus why i'll tell you all those things in the coming days don't worry but here the point is that how jesus resurrection was revealed to the disciples was a breaking of the bread so we read in acts 242 and 246 that they did this custom for what this was a israel's regular meal this was not the lord's memorial supper at all read again read let us read see look uh, sorry acts 242 and 46 please concentrate everybody uh joel brother can you read Acts second chapter forty two and forty six, please read. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and and in prayer. And they continue daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Underline the- it was from house to house. they did not break the bread daily in the prayer hall no they were doing the prayer in the temples you see that is a common synagogue so every day they used to have all the things but breaking the bread from house to house and did what continue with the next hour. did eat their meat with gladness and sing singleness of heart they did eat meat that means it was a dinner it was a lunch what they doing this was not the lord supper at all you see so daily what they were doing was the regular meal it was a israel custom to break the bread and eat that's what they did on the way to emmaus you see now let us read about acts 20th chapter first day of the week they gathered why read acts 20 verse 7 jail with the read acts 20 verse 7 and upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to bread to break sorry together to break break bread ah wait wait wait, wait. they all gathered together on the first day of the week why to break bread which bread jesus resurrection was revealed by breaking of the bread they did this breaking of the bread in a memory of the resurrection of our lord but not the lord supper because wine is never mentioned here so weekly ones on the first day underline not the last day of the week they did not do any day of the week on the first day of the week why because jesus was resurrected on the first day of the week so to commemorate that jesus resurrection they used to break the bread now what did jesus say 
do this in remembrance of my death not about my resurrection so you you never told in the scriptures to remember jesus resurrection what did bible say read brother first corinthians 11:26 first corinthians 11:26 munaster please read first corinthians 7:11:26 For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do so the Lord's death till he come. You are showing the Lord's death, not the Lord's resurrection. We are told to remember the Lord's death till he come. Now you tell me, you see, huh? death. When do we remember somebody's death? Imagine Ambedkar, Mahatma Gandhi, Javada Nehru. Great, great warriors, uh, you see, the leaders, they all passed away. Even in your nation also, there will be very great, uh, you see, leaders. Uh. Now, when do you remember uh, this uh, person's death? Uh? Do you remember it uh, monthly, weekly, daily? When do you remember it? Uh? Once, uh, once in a year. Once in a year. Correct. Uh. If you do it daily, will the uh, people keep quiet? Uh? No. Similarly, Jesus' death has to be remembered when? Only yearly once. Not monthly, not weekly, not daily at all. But is it given in the Bible? Yes, it is given in the Bible that we should do yearly once. Where is it given? Let us read. You see, John 18, 20, 30, John 18, 28. Uh, one minute. John 18 chapter 28 that's uh, scripture is uh, quoted wrongly uh, please read john 18 28 anybody from the bible gopal brother can you read john 18 28 hmm. when did jesus die hmm. brother hmm. john 18 verse 28 then led the Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. They may eat the Passover. Jesus died on the cross on the day of the Passover. Remember it. You see, he did not die any other day. He died exactly on the Passover. Why? Because he was the Passover lamb. Now, when did the people of Israel celebrate this Passover? Did they do it weekly, monthly, daily? Yearly once. Read Luke 22. Luke 22, uh, verse 7 and 8. Luke 22, verse 7 and 8. Uh, Ashish Mother, can you read Luke 22, verse 7 and 8? Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. See? He told the disciples, Go and prepare the Passover that I may eat. Now what did Jesus eat? Now what Jesus commemorated? The bread and the wine. What was it? That was the Passover. Read verse uh, uh, 13 14, 15. Luke 22nd chapter 13, 14, 15. Uh, Roshni sister, are you there? Can you read? Luke 22, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Anil Buddha, are you there? Uh, Rosh sister, please read. Yes. L Luke uh, 22, sister. 13, 14, 15, sister. <clears throat> okay, brother. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. Underline. When the... Wait. They prepared the Passover. Next. Passover. Uh. When the hours came, Jesus and his apostle reclined at the table and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. See, I have eagerly desired to eat which Passover, sir? This Passover. Not the Old Testament Passover, cutting lamb. This Passover, breaking the bread, 
drinking the wine. The Passover was the meal that Jesus took. Because why? He was the anti-typical Passover lamb. 1 Corinthians 5.7 1 Corinthians 5.7 uh, Romy's sister, can you read? 1 Corinthians 5.7 Romy Easter, you there? 1 Corinthians 5 7. Therefore, the old leaven, that he may be a new lamb, new lamb, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ out, Passover is sacrificed for us. See, even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So Christ is anti typical Passover, dear brethren. Now, Passover, when did they connect? Did they connect daily? Yearly once. Okay. Yearly months means when? Now, when did the Jewish New Year start? When is our New Year? Which is our New Year? Tell me when the New Year starts for you. January 1st. January. What I'm asking. Very difficult. Tough question. Tell me. See. January is our New Year. But when is the Jewish New Year? When is the Jewish New Year? Read Exodus 12.2. Exodus 12.2. Joel Buddha, please read. And somebody read in Nepali Bible also. Somebody else, please open in Nepali Bible. Joel Buddha, read in English. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. First month of the year. Which is this one? Read Exodus 13.4, brother, now. Exodus 13.4 in English. This day came ye came ye out in the month Abib. Abib. This first month is month Abib in Jewish language, Hebrew language. Now, same thing. Can somebody read it in Nepali? Exodus 13.4. Who can read it in Nepali? Okay, I got it. Abib Maina ko azake din ma timiyuri niske raayo. Ah, Abib Maina. Abib Maina, okay. Chitramas, Chaitramas is given in any of your Bible? Any of your Bible? Does that word is there in Nepali? Chaitramas, Chitramas or something? Ashish, brother, does it come in your Nepali Bible? No, brother. It's not in, even in the footnote. Ah. It's not mentioned. So it's not mentioned there? Yeah. Okay, good. Anyway, not a thing to worry. See, you see some other languages that the month of Habib is actually the month of April. It's called as Chaitramas. Okay? Now, you see, actually the Bible beginning of the year is April. Okay, that's what the, the Jewish people left uh, Egypt. Then, how did it come to January? You know, when uh, Israel people after the crucifixion of Jesus, the Israel was destroyed. They were scattered all over the world. When they were scattered all over the world, they used to celebrate the new year, the Passover, on the month of April only. And the, there was an emperor in Rome. He got very furious. He told, no, you are not going to celebrate all this Passover and all your religious things in my place, in Rome. We are going to stop all this. Because Roman emperor was the one who was ruling the whole world. Then, the king observed one thing and he changed the month, the beginning of the year itself. He changed the entire calendar. He changed it to January. Why did he change it to January? Because that emperor's name was Generousus. Generousus. So, a suitable month which was equivalent for his name, he chose January. So, Generousus, January. Therefore, he shifted the beginning of the year to January instead of April. You know, that is how yeah, January 1st was the new year. And the Roman, and the Roman calendar, Lugurian calendar, everybody is, began to use. And so what happened? In the calendar, today also, January is called as the first, uh, you see. But when does the financial year begin? <laughs> Even today, it's April. Now, what happened? After doing this uh, new year also, the Jewish people still used to continue the April as the beginning of the year. Now, to, to tease them, to rag them, you see, 
to bully them the king made that uh, april is april fool you see that's how april fool came you know all this theory about april fool this is how it came actually anyway but from the bible april is the beginning of the year so you can read all these things in your house okay so the passover about the passover is given in exodus 12 chapter very detailedly okay it says uh, on the 10th day you need to take a lamb you see and you have to keep it in the house for 14th day on the 14th day you need to kill it when let us read exodus 12:6 exodus 12:6 uh exodus 12:6 who can read gopal brother or uh, uh, yeah, brother hmm. And he shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. In the evening. So Jesus similarly he came to Jerusalem on a as when on the tenth day, John twelve chapter. You see, first verse he says six days before the Passover he came to Lazarus' house, and John twelve twelve it says, you see, on the next day. that means the five days before the passover you come five days before the passover it is the exact the 10th day that jesus entered jerusalem he was welcomed as a king as a lamb was welcomed inside the house similarly jesus was welcomed then what happened the lamb was supposed to be a first year he should have no blemish at all so similarly jesus was holy harmless separate from sinners he had no blemish at all and what they had to do after slaughtering the lamb the blood had to be applied on the door post you see and everybody has to be inside the house nobody should go outside the house so what does it mean if we need to be saved from death we need to be inside the faith of jesus we need to apply the blood of jesus and faith upon our heart's door you see we need to be in the household of faith in this faith we need to be there <coughs> read uh, galatians 6:10 anil brother can you read galatians 6:10 as you have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are, are of the household of faith household this house the blood has to be always there you should be inside this blood you see and what will happen the danger of death will pass it seems so whoever is out of this house they shall be killed so once you will leave this household of faith and go out immediately you shall die the second death now in the night after uh, you see killing the lamb you see when was the lamb killed remember it they did not kill it uh, in the morning they killed it in the evening read that verse again brother exodus 126 exodus 126 gobal brother can you read exodus 126 sure brother exodus 126 and he shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of israel shall kill it in the evening in the evening therefore jesus died on the cross in the evening also i'll prove it to you okay jesus died at uh, almost uh, 3 pm in the evening you see and uh, jesus celebrated this passover after 6 pm hence uh, this is the time that we need to take hence it is called as lord's memorial supper not dinner neither lunch And how did they have it? You see, we remember, we all know this story very well. We have seen this story in the movies and all. No? You see, in the night they killed a lamb. They used to roast it. You see, eat it raw, and uh, they have to be trimly dressed with shoes, uh, all the dress, everything packed, everything, and read, eat it very fastly. So, what does it signify? This signifies that uh, we need to be well prepared. Always be ready. in lots activities very thoroughly ready always uh, put on the shoe uh, preaching gospel you see efficient 6 chapter no it is the full be always ready with the armor of god that your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace this dress uh, should always be ready with our staff in our hand and the word of god always should be in our hand your brethren okay and uh, uh, okay so this has to be taken on that day Okay, correctly, no. On the day of the Passover, yearly ones in the evening. Okay, now Jesus died on Friday. He was resurrected on Sunday. Correct, no. Now, you know, 
that day when jesus died was a good friday it was a friday it was a good okay good because he is a sacrifice for us but today every year it will come on a friday have you observed on the calendar good friday will definitely fall on friday how will it fall every year doesn't fall on a friday at all they have manipulated the bible they changed the bible just to suit their idea the bible doesn't say like for example you are born on a tuesday means next year it will come on wednesday then it will come on friday saturday sunday it keeps on rotating it doesn't come every year the same day but here the christians instead of giving importance for the particular event and particular time and the date they gave importance for the day which is unscriptural you see therefore dear brethren this has to be taken when huh? on the month of uh, nisan you see 13th in the evening yearly once we have to take therefore apostle paul regarding this one only he is correcting the church how let us read finally and finish uh first corinthians 11 chapter 27 to 31 joel brother please read first corinthians 11 chapter 27 to 31 Wherefore, whose whose ever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine his, himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For the for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation. to him himself not dis discerning the lord's body See, for for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily taking whenever they want monthly weekly or daily that's a unworthy manner if you take it it means you're eating damnation you see and condemnation not understanding that it's the lord's body you see dear brethren therefore it has to be properly celebrated once a year even after telling this one somebody goes to partake this one you know in a improper way now what does it mean it means that is not the lord supper that is the devil's table read it's given in the bible first corinthians 10 21 first corinthians 10 21 muna sister can you read first corinthians 10 21 he cannot drink the cup of the lord and the cup of the devil he cannot be partakers of the lord's table and of the table of devil see you can't be drinking of the lord's table as well as the devil's table you see you can't uh, eat of the lord's table and the devil's table you can't drink of the lord's table and the devil's cup also you see because satan has duplicated everything you have seen from beginning to end how satan has manipulated the bible same memorial supper he has duplicated it lord's table the devil stable lord's cup the devil cup lord's cup is only for once a year year you can take it when every one that's the satan's choice that's the satan's world dear brethren so we should be very cautious and uh, we should be very attentive because this is remembering our lord's death this is not a something that we do it uh, just for our satisfaction a dying person requested only one thing from us he never requested anything for us to do in his remembrance has jesus requested any one thing dear brethren not even one thing he requested only one thing please do this in remembrance of me even in a jail when they are hanging a culprit his last desire and wish shall be fulfilled our lord's last desire was that his body would celebrate it appropriately only just a small thing today the christian world have misunderstood the scriptures and doing things which are pleasing for themselves let us pause for a moment and think really is it bringing glory to god by taking it daily monthly weekly we should be taking it yearly once in a proper way we should never miss it dear brethren that's not a very ordinary thing 
it's our Lord's death because of which we have life today. What gratitude do we give to our Lord? You see, there's some small request. So dear brethren, in the coming days, let us all be faithful to the Lord and do it in a proper way. And Lord add blessings to these words. If anybody has got any doubts, any questions, they can ask. Anybody, any questions, any doubts? Anybody? Anil brother, any questions, any doubts? No, brother. Okay, Joel brother? No, brother. Munna sister? Brother? Any questions you have, sister? No, brother. Okay, Romy sister, Amar brother, any doubts, any questions? No questions, brother. Okay, Roshni sister and Kamal brother, any doubts? No, brother. Okay, thank you.